think. There we go. That was the thing I needed to click. And now we can do a show. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your word. We give you thanks for this chance to learn more about you. We give you thanks for this chance for you to speak to us. God, may we hear you. Uh, may we speak your word. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Uh, good evening, Amen. friends, and uh, welcome uh, to another edition of uh, Scripture Talk, um, our podcast where we talk about Scripture. It's very descriptive. We found a podcast title that actually tells you what the show is about. You tune into Scripture Talk, you are pretty sure you're going to hear talk about Scripture. Very handy, the thing we did. Um, but yeah, this is her podcast where we do exactly that. We talk about that week's scripture uh, and see what God has for us. Um, I am Pastor Trey Comstock. With me as ever is Go Brandy. Sister Brandy Dudley, how y'all doing this evening? And Go Scott. Pastor Scott Ketchup, great to see y'all. Um, and this week we are, uh, so in terms of sermons, we are uh, bang smack in the middle of a summer of rock. And and so, yes, there are rock songs that go with all these, but in the end, it's a sermon series. And so that means sermon series, we talk about scriptures. And so our scripture uh, this evening is, or for this week, is short, but but well-known, right? We are not, you know, if maybe you don't hear a ton of uh, sermons on Jonah, you probably at least hear this scripture a lot, um, even if not necessarily in sermon form. It is Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Uh, This is Jesus talking in the Sermon on the Mount. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, if that sounded wrong to your ears, both familiar and wrong at the same time, there's a couple reasons for that. One, uh, this is a modern translation uh, from the Greek. This is from the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Edition. The Lord's Prayer that you are used to saying and hearing dates to the 1300s um, to one of the earliest English translations of scripture, even older. Um, it's not, we, we say, oh, it's the King James version. No, actually our translation of the uh, Lord's Prayer predates the King James. Um, it is older than that. It dates to the 1300s. Um, so that's part of it is it lacks the these and thous and thys um, and uh, trespasses instead of debts. And, and, and so that's part of it. Uh, the other part of it is there's a bit missing. Um, the Lord's Prayer, as we say it, ends in a blessing. And the scripture version of the Lord's Prayer does not end with that blessing. Um, and so that got added to the prayer at some point from the point that Matthew's community would have been saying that prayer, you know, in the first century to the, you know, 13, 14th century when it gets translated into English. And so that's the two reasons. This is the Lord's Prayer um, that in some ways, as we know and love, uh, but with two really distinct differences, uh, one translational, one content-wise. Regardless, one of the things that is, uh, I think, awesome about this prayer um, uh, for, for the time is, this is one of the, the first times, at least that we ha- and we know of in writing, that the prayer addressing God in this way of Father. Yeah. You know, Jesus really sets this up of the relational uh, aspect of coming uh, to him. And yet also, even though he takes it and makes it personal in that, he's still com- keeping it communal by saying our father it's not just yes i'm his son and it's my father but no this is our father we all can relate to him in that manner which to to the jews was not how they approached him in prayer at that time at all well and it's even if i if i remember the greek translation correctly or the greek greek original rather correctly it's a really informal word for father right? Um, it is, we use the English father, because that's what we're used to hearing, but the English, you know, no one calls your father, oh, okay, that's not true. Um, very few people call their father, father, right? We, we say dad or daddy or pop or whatever. And so this is more akin to that. This is an informal um, take on referring to 
um, God as father even. And what's interesting is, so there's this thing called the Jesus Seminar. Um, this is this really scholarly enterprise uh, from a couple decades ago. And what the Jesus Seminar attempted to do is rate every saying of Jesus to a scholarly degree of how likely is it that Jesus actually said this, right? Um, and so some folks would say, what does it matter? Of course, Jesus said all of it. Some folks would say, of course, why does this matter? Jesus said none of it. Um, and most scholars come down somewhere in between. Uh, Everyone in the Jesus Seminar is pretty clear that historically, um, Jesus said the Our Father part, because no one else, as you, as you rightly pointed out, Scott, no one else had really talked about God that way prior to Christ. Um, and so even the most scholarly, even the most kind of, if, if we put biblical literalists on one scale, uh, the most biblical non-literalists on the other side of the scale, um, even the most kind of non-biblical literal theologians would say this first, this opening line of uh, the, 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 of the, what we call the Lord's prayer, which, get, you know, in Spanish is the, our father, the Padre Nuestro, um, even that comes from Christ. That is a, a new thing that Christ is doing that had not existed before. And another so, aspect of the scripture, Brandy. another aspect of the scripture is that he teaches us literally how to pray. Uh, yeah. One of his disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. And he gives us this. The Lord's prayer is also called the model prayer because yeah. if someone needed prayer one-on-one, -on -one, you can turn to scripture and give all the full aspects of prayer, there's an acronym for that, acts, uh, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication, that all of that is covered in the Lord's Prayer. And I like the fact that Jesus gives us this when we don't know what to say. We can say this and have all the bases covered. Well, right. It's why, you know, as part of our liturgy of, that we use for morning prayer and evening, or I don't know, and I haven't been able to in a I, lot of eating prayers, but like, I use it too. Um, yeah, that we, we close with it because we, we try to be we try to, for those streams, the, one of the purposes behind it is to pray as specifically as we can, right? Um, to pray for what's going on in the world right now, pray for what is happening um, in people's lives right now. And, but then we close the Lord's Prayer in part as a way of, of catching the rest of it, right? Uh, uh, of catching what we left out of making sure that we're praying also in a more universal sense. Um, yeah, and the Lord's Prayer is, is structured in a way that allows us to do that. Um, the, the, the other kind of theological piece for the Lord's Prayer and where, where I think the sermon is going, um, and certainly in the way that the series is designed, is this is one of those places where um, we pray for what's called the already and the not yet, right? Um, the, the, our father who art in heaven, your, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that happens right now in this day and age, kind of, and in the age to come will happen even more so. But if you add, this is one of those scriptures where you ask, is the kingdom of God here? Um, or is it to come yet? The answer is mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's that it uh yeah i was we just gonna say it's that it's that crossover it's that uh both and uh you right. yes god's kingdom has come but the fullness of it isn't completely right. realized here because there's so much more of it to be realized than we even can begin to grasp yet with our right. finite minds at this moment and so he's fulfilled it all he's finished what needs to be done on with the work of the cross and all of that and yet there's still so much more of it that has to be processed that has to come through and so the fullness of what is there in heaven has not been realized in this plane of existence and so we get glimpses of it and you know this is where you know sometimes i think being you know, a, a comic book geek kind of helps of thinking of the, the you know these different dimensions and and science fiction things laying over on top of each other because that's what the spirit realm does is lays over on top and at times we we see glimpses of it but the reality of it what's going on in this prayer is that we're asking God all the things that you already have in place there in your kingdom in heaven let that become real uh -huh. how we see it let right. it become real to my ability to experience it 
in the here and now, it's kind of like a, like what happened that time when, you know, that Elijah was there and his guy was with him and they were, they were, they were surrounded by the enemy and he was scared. And Elijah just asked God to open his eyes to see that those that are with us are more than though, you know, God, in this prayer, open my eyes to the reality of your kingdom that I've yet to see and understand. But also that it is not just a thing that is out there. It is a thing that is also happening here, right? Yeah. There are places in our world where God's will is done, where God's kingdom has come, right? On the earth as it is in heaven. Like it is that it is already present, right? We very much believe the Holy Spirit is present in the world. Yes. Uh, that the Holy Spirit was present in Christ's earthly ministry um, and uh-huh. then comes down at Pentecost um, in a broader sense, right? Um, so we, we believe that this is happening. In some ways, what we call the, the already presence of the kingdom is what we call the church. And I, and I don't necessarily mean like churches, you know, buildings and organizations, but church as the united body of Christ, those who seek after God's will in their lives um, in a collective manner now. Uh, and so that is, that is here. Um, and, and we see remarkable uh, things happen in the spirit and remarkable things happen in God's kingdom right here, right now, every day. But it is also not here completely. That work is not done. It is not fully you know god's kingdom come it is not fully god's will done everywhere but it is also not god's will is done nowhere right it is somewhere in between it is already here the kingdom of god is already here the kingdom of god is also not yet here and then the realization too that give us this day our daily bread that he does provide for us Mm -hmm. every day We don't have to be like the children of Israel gathering up all the manna so we won't have to worry about it and come back and it's all ruined and everything. God will take care of our daily needs in the here and now. That he will never leave us in a point where we're begging bread. He'll always provide for us. Right, but there's also... Uh, it, 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 this talks a lot about what God's going to do, what God is doing is going to do, but it also calls on us to live in a certain way, right? This is, you know, goes back to what we, in some ways, what we've been talking about this whole series of understanding that uh, while we are saved by faith, put a pin in that because that faith then leads you to live in a certain way. Uh, and you, you even see that bridge here of, you know, that we, we, we ask for forgiveness, um, but even this prayer reminds us of our responsibility in turn to forgive, right? That if we're going to ask God to treat us in a certain way, uh, then we need to seek to also live in a certain way in response to what God has done for us. Yeah, and I, I was about to hit on that too. I'm glad you mentioned that because so often we forget that, you know, our forgiveness of others, you know, we, 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 we like to hold on to our hurts and our uh you know resentment for some reason and a lot of times we think because if we forgive somebody then that means we're saying what they did was okay right and And that's not that's not what that's doing and what we don't realize is that really holding on to the unforgiveness is hurting us far more than it is them and we not only does that happen in the physical and emotional, but that happens in the spiritual because it sets up a block even to the forgiveness of God in that. And so just the releasing of it, you know, is just saying that I'm letting God deal with that situation and I'm not going to try to do the vengeance. I'm not going to try to do the whatever in that situation. I'm going to let it go Uh and just trust you with that as God asks us to do in all things, which is a a step of faith and isn't easy. I'm not saying it's easy by any means, but it is necessary. Well, not forgiving somebody is like you drinking poison, waiting for the other person to die. Right. Yeah. But also it is important. I, I, I like Scott's point that it is important to understand what forgiveness is and what forgiveness isn't Mm -hmm. and what forgiveness the thing that forgiveness doesn't mean is that the relationship just goes back to what it was. Right. Um, So one of the ways I always want us to think about when we talk about forgiveness is um, what would you, when you talk about forgiveness, always remember that one of the things that needs to be forgiven um, is a spouse that's being beat by their, by the, you know, being beat by their husband or being beat by their wife. 
right? And so would you honestly look at that person and say, uh, forgiveness means you need to go back to that person um, and restore that relationship back to what it was. No, it should not, right? That's just perpetuating a cycle of violence. Um, that is just perpetuating uh, a cycle of harm. That is just setting that person up uh, to get hurt even worse the next time, right? So we got to think about, when we talk about forgiveness, it is about um, restoring how we view that person, uh, restoring yeah. what we hold uh, against that person. Um, it is letting go of hatred. Um, it is letting go of ill will. Uh, but that does not necessarily mean that the relationship goes back to what it was before, because all that can be sometimes is just setting someone up for a cycle of violence. We got to, you got to separate the, because too often that like call to forgive, uh, forgive and forget is often used um, against people who have been abused to go back yeah. to their abuser. Yeah. And that's not, that's not wise. It is always uh, wise to make sure that you're keeping yourself and loved ones and kids in those situations uh, safe. Uh, forgiveness is something that is done sometimes from a distance, uh, yes. maybe from a safe house or whatever. And uh, the rest, even if there is a desire for reconciliation, has to sometimes be done at a very slow and earned thing with safety precautions in place to make sure that there is a change. There has to be a change of behavior. There has to be a change of the heart before right. going back into that type of situation. And even then, gently and slowly, uh, because, yeah, it forgiveness doesn't mean you just jump back in there and put yourself in harm's way by any means. Right. And, and a relationship having that potential healing process or not, right. Not all those, not all of those relationships right. are going to heal. That doesn't mean that for, that you, it's been left with unforgiveness. It just means, you know, sometimes that relationship was unhealthy. That person was in an unhealthy place and that you they can you can forgive someone without restoring that relationship fully. It is not just being set up to get abused again. And, and I think that's part of what is here in this uh, prayer is constantly keeping at the front of it uh, yeah. God's will in mind, looking for His kingdom to be here on earth, and then looking at our responsibility of how we walk that out with that always being what we're focused on, not our will, not our desire, whether, whatever that might be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because, you know, if you understand, you understand like God's forgiveness for us is, is slightly functions slightly differently than what our forgiveness of another person is. Right. Um, partly because God's a big kid and God can take whatever. Um, but forgiveness is counted, you know, our forgiveness is that we are counted as righteous, not that we have actually become righteous. And so we offer that gift of forgiveness to another, perhaps even before they have, quote unquote, earned it. Um, but there still needs to be growth there uh, for that relationship to be restored. Um, so there's a, a comment here in the chat uh, from Beth that's very hard to do. Um, and it's a wonderful feeling when you let that go and the fear that you have uh, when it's uh, truest. When, it, when it's truly gone, uh, you feel so good inside um, and can finally do the things God wants you to do um, and, and see how we're supposed to be. Right, yeah, that there is, you know that difference, right? Where you are holding that hatred against that person, holding that unforgiveness, and it is a process and it is not necessarily an easy uh, because some, some of the things people do to other people is horrific. It is, you know, should also put in terms, help us wrap our heads around um, the strength and the depth of what God has given to us, um, that God forgives us um, in the ways that God has forgiven us, um, how hard it is for us to, to offer that forgiveness to others sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can attest just, to that. I can attest mm -hmm. to that. I had a friend that did me so wrong. I mean, she, she just verbally abused me and all of that. We, we kind of got mad at each other and fussed at each other. Then she moved out of town to uh, uh, up, up north and I never get a chance to reconcile our differences. And it was just about the time I was going to go on the walk to Emmaus. And lo and behold, she comes back through Texas to get some things and I recognized her voice. And we sat down and we talked and worked things out and we apologized to each other and forgave each other. 
just before I went to the Wall Street Mayor. So I was like, God just showed me I was going to take something in my heart that I didn't know I even had yeah. was a was a hate towards this person. But we had a chance to make our differences and settle things and made my walk more precious than ever, knowing that God gives us a chance to forgive each other. And when yeah. the opportunity comes up, take it because you may never know. Absolutely. And, but again, that it's not always going to be that beautiful kind of mutual scenario, right? Where you have that chance right. to actually work through that issue. Some of, some of what's, some of the harder forgiveness can be when the person, when the person is unrepentant. Um, and when you don't have that opportunity for that kind of mutual forgiveness, where it is a very one-sided thing. And, and even still, it, the, the scripture doesn't say trespass against those, you know, forgive those uh, who uh, have actually cleared their ledger. No, it is uh, forgive the people uh, who still owe us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, forgive those people who are, who, who are unrepentant. Uh, and, and, and that is, and that makes it harder. Uh, but that is, that is, seem, that seems to be uh, what this scripture is calling upon us to do and be. Yeah, that's part of walking out his kingdom come here, because when we think of where Jesus ultimately ended on the cross and what he did for people who are very unrepentant of their actions toward him, that still is for people who are unrepentant of his actions toward him and that love and how we are called to then go and do likewise daily, taking up our cross to follow him and be representatives of that same love, that same uh, outpouring to those around us only because of his strength flowing through us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's difficult. It isn't an easy calling. And uh, yet he then gives us the strength. And I think that's why this prayer is there understanding that it is his strength in heaven, his will. And again, what we were saying that it's finding the way to do that day by day. I think that's why it's in there, that daily bread, that daily yeah. mm -hmm. provision. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't say that prayer and get through all these steps, the provision for the bread, the provision for mm -hmm. forgiveness and all of that without having to do this every day. Uh, I remember when I went through uh, my divorce, I found myself uh, struggling with that and uh, multiple times having to go back even when I thought I had reached a place of forgiveness in that situation and finding myself having to re-forgive and uh, just um, still you know there's aspects of hurt that comes from those types of situations that you find yourself going back where like uh, Brandy said things that you thought was gone and didn't realize you know God digs a little deeper like that plow comes across another rock that you have to face and deal with and uh -huh. get, take it back to him and say Lord take this and the more that's done it opens up a spot for him to fill more of his love that can be used and I'm just kept thinking of that when uh, you were reading what Beth had said you know that perfect love casts out all fear uh -huh. and that's what comes down as we seek him and seek his will and press into him it gives opportunities for his perfect love to fill us and that's what causes that fear to go away which then when that fear is no longer there because of his perfect love makes it a little bit easier to forgive preach brother well, right and in some ways <laughs> like it is part of what it looks like for god's kingdom to come and god's will to be done right that that this the second half of this prayer is in some ways painting a picture of what it looks like for the f first half of the prayer to be true, right? Mm -hmm. um, in God's kingdom come and God's will done, um, everyone is fed and everyone is forgiven, right? Yeah. And and instead of never ending cycles of violence and hate, we have a cycle of forgiveness that forgiven people then in turn share that forgiveness with others uh, rather than forgiven people still holding on, even though they are themselves forgiven, not sharing that forgiveness, right? It is show, you know, that in God's kingdom um, is marked by a cycle of love in the way that our world right now can often be marked by a cycle of violence, right? Well, you did this, and so I'll do this, and then you'll do that, right? And it's just, it is, is forever you get stuck in that cycle of, you know, it, you know, quote that is not from a Christian, but an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, right? Yeah. Um, 
and, and in God's kingdom, a forgiven person forgives and that, and therefore shares that love and therefore um, makes that love more real in the world each time that every time, you know, one of the, one of the cool pieces from Dietrich Bonhoeffer's life together is that understanding of when the number one way you get forgiven by God is when a brother or sister in Christ forgives you because they're only able to forgive you because of God. Um, and so, you know, in, even in the traditional version of the Methodist uh, communion liturgy and, and confession is the pastor says in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Uh, and then the congregation says, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, that we have offered forgiveness mutually to each other through the power of Christ. This is a part of what it looks like for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done, is this cycle of love and forgiveness, rather than the never-ending cycle of hate and violence that often our world finds itself stuck in. We break through that through God's power. And that last part I want to talk about real quick, verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver uh, us from the evil one. I read that as, Lord, keep me from being tempted. But you know how yeah. weak I am. If I get into it, get me out of it. Well, in some ways, it's like, hey, God, take it easy on me, right? Like there's yeah. that, I, right. you know, my, my read on that is this is this is asking, right? That doesn't mean it's going to be granted. Uh, not every, you know, God, not Santa Claus, and even Santa Claus still hasn't given me a pony. So, you know, that didn't work out. Uh, and so sometimes, sometimes we need to be brought into temptation. Sometimes we do need to face the time of trial. Um, it is okay to ask. Even Jesus asks, right? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane asks, hey, do I, can, is there a way that I don't have to do this? And then God said, nope. And Jesus said, Okay, right? And so understand when you pray that lead us not at the time of trial, you may not get it uh, because sometimes we need to be brought into the time of trial so that God's kingdom can come and so that God's will will be done on the earth as it is in heaven, right? It's okay to ask, uh, hey, God, take it easy on me. And sometimes God is going to say, no, I can't do that. I need you to do this. And here's the strength to do it. Here's the strength to carry on. You're stronger than you think you are. You can resist that temptation. You can overcome the evil one in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God doesn't just abandon you to your task, uh, but there's no way around. Sometimes you will be brought into temptation. Uh, and sometimes you will need rescue from the evil one because you're going to be face to face. And that's part of the kingdom building work. Mm -hmm. Yes, that whole uh, uh, testing that produces endurance and strength and stuff like that. Though, though I uh, often find that God tends to think of me as a much better man than I think, and uh, you know, have often reminded him that you, you know I, I I'm not where Job was, God, you know, and I think he chuckles and and thinks is I know that's why we're working on getting you there. Right. <laughs> it has the opposite so, effect. But, 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 but also <laughs> it's not our strength, right? It's still it is still God's strength. It is still God right. is the primary actor through us. And so no, we are not that strong. Uh and if you think you're doing this on your own, you're you are either lying or have a long way to go on your faith journey. Uh because right. no, you can't do this on your own, nor were you meant to. Um, yeah, I, but just know that this prayer isn't always going to get answered. It is the way you, it'll get answered, I guess. Just maybe not with the answer you want. And sometimes God's going to tell you no, because God ain't Santa Claus. Although Santa Claus, again, keeps telling me no. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that people often miss in that verse when they start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's like, well, okay, actually you could endure and get okay. through all things yeah. if he's giving you the strength to do it, but you're not going to go up to the top of the building and just jump off scrotting that scripture and all of a sudden fly. Uh, you you right. got to follow where he leads. And, uh -huh. and, right. uh, right. and so again, it strength, is all about, so. yeah. it is all about <laughs> listening to God and being the positions where God needs you to be, to push the kingdom of God forward, right? To be a part of that, breaking the cycle of hate and, and creating the cycle of love. And when you are in those positions, sometimes it will look very much like the time of trial look very much like temptation. You very much like facing the evil one. Um, and in those moments, you are not left alone. But yeah, it is not just all of a sudden you are a, a superhero with terrible, uh, you know, terrible decision making. There's a great, or maybe not a great, there is an interesting um, Amazon series um, that was based, uh, based on a comic book called The Boys um, that, is, um, that is basically what if heroes 
superheroes were all kind of bad people? What if superheroes, people with superpowers, just made terrible decisions and hurt and killed people, right? Like, it's a really, like, dark take on super, like, Superman, super ethical, right? You know, Batman, kind of gritty, but doesn't kill people, right? Iron Man is a reformed arms dealer. Um, Spider-Man's a cool teen. But what if these, all of these people were terrible? Uh, and, and it shows the, like, you know, you can use these powers for ill. We are given these powers only for good. So yeah, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, assuming you are doing what God needs you to do and are in the right places. You have not just become a superhero with terrible decision-making powers. Hmm. Yeah. You're, you know, <laughs> you, you, you can still wrap your car around that tree. Uh, you can still hurt people if you're not careful. Uh, you can still hurt yourself if you're not careful. Um, and on that note, that seems as a good place as any uh, to wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Scripture Talk. Uh, we will be back next week uh, with another fresh take on Scripture. If you have feedback for us, please, please, please leave a comment on Facebook, comment on YouTube, um, comment on our website, palestinegrace.com slash video. You can email us, uh, gracechurchpalestine um, at gmail.com. If you're looking for an audio-only version, of the show just search scripture talk by grace church in your podcatcher of choice um and we'll be back again with you next week for another edition uh go in peace to love and serve the lord and remember fear not stay well god is with us we can actually hear it this week right we got music yeah we're fancy now Ha, ha, ha.